things for each other, but Bet had informed me. She says, look, I am engaged. Now, right. Bet was engaged to a sergeant engine fitter in the RAF in the Middle East. Right. After that, as far as I was concerned, there was no romance. There wasn't going to be any romance. I wasn't going to query that bloke's pitch when I'd drawn the good straw languishing at home and he was out in the desert. So you then felt, Betty, that you made a promise to your fiancé. My fiancé had arrived in England and now I had to come and tell Joe that, um, that he had come home and uh, this would have to be the end of it, you see, and uh, my old life was returning and I had I had to forget Joe, but I was very, very upset, in tears. I asked her to marry me. I'd got it out. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to hear myself ask her. Because you knew because that I you knew were... that she wouldn't say yes. Not that I didn't want her to say yes. I would have loved her to have said yes, but she couldn't. It was a very hard thing to say no to Joe, yes. <laughs> really. It was... It's something I can't answer really well i'm not even going to try and help you here love because i can't i know the dilemma you must have been in yes i wasn't i was footloose and fancy free so i couldn't put myself in your place no. and i knew that if i asked you and expected an answer i'd be hurting you causing you more problems mm. so i didn't push it joe and betty had their last dance together in the worthing town hall in 1944. joe tells me it was a slow foxtrot Betty married her fiancé, and Joe also settled down and started a family. In 2004, now both widowed, Betty was watching the telly when, there on the screen, she recognised an old friend, talking about his beloved Spitfire. Soon afterwards, they spoke to each other for the first time in 60 years. Once again, some of that old Spitfire magic had brought Joe and Betty together. I knew that we must meet, we must see each other again to see if there was still, oh, still a light. And she met me at Chichester Station. And to me, she looked like the same lass I'd said cheerio to 60 years ago. Really? Yes. Mm. What did you think about him? Well, he had the same voice, a little grey, grey. <laughs> but uh, just the same old Joe. <laughs> we went about like we used to when we were 22. We'd even old bloody hands people used to look at as gone out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> it's, 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 it's very hard to explain, John, very yes, hard. Yes, yeah. It was there, wasn't it, love, and oh, it still yes, is. Oh, yes, yes. I think, really, we get on better, in a way, because we have more time together rather than just under a bloody spit fire wing or <laughs> in a dispersal hut or uh, in some snoggy little dance hall somewhere. <laughs> We're our own people now, and we're living it that way, the way we would have done had we got married in the times we met. These last seven years have been wonderful. And you love each other, of course. Of course we do. Well, there's that many ways of defining love, I don't know, but if it means do you want to be together all the time, yes, we do. Yes. Well, for me, that is the greatest love story ever told. The final scene in our Spitfire story. But surely endings don't always have to be cut and dried. We've left some loose ends. What about our plane, MH434? You might have thought its fighting days were over when World War II ended, but they weren't. It flew for the Royal Dutch Air Force, crash landing in the Dutch East Indies in 1947, and then moved to the Belgian Air Force before returning to Britain in the 1950s. The Spitfire. It's 75 years since the first one flew, and they're now more beautiful than ever. The pilots who fly them say there's nothing better. But we can't just leave it like that. It's time for former Cadet Sergeant Sergeant to have a go. And here's my new best friend, a Spitfire with room for two. Oh, this is the moment. This is the moment, and we're taking off! Wow! It was the greatest thrill of my life. Wow! Look at that! Look at that! So easy to manoeuvre, 
that it must have been the very nearest thing to having wings oneself. I'm flying it. I'm actually flying a Spitfire. Special, superb, splendid. I've been given control of the greatest plane that's ever been made. You more or less put it on and you were flying. Richard, what do I do now? Turn off to the left, John. Move it off to the left. <laughs> OK, you have control. I have control. You have control. OK, so Thank you. once you've got a Spitfire right, you could do anything with it. Oh, goodness me. We're going low now. Right over here, Phil. We felt we had the best aeroplanes in the world. What a climb. And you can feel the climb rate. Oh, we go. Oh, God. A victory roll. You can't expect chaps to fly and fight in a Spitfire and then forget about it. It's imprinted on your mind forever. Yeah, we've done it. <laughs> that was a victory roll. Oh. <laughs> it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. When I started on this program, I thought it would be interesting and fun. What I didn't expect was to get so emotionally involved. It's churned me up. It's turned me upside down. This Spitfire, what a story. <laughs> happy birthday, Spitfire. Many happy returns. Later, imagine being one of the youngest Spitfire pilots to fight in the Battle of Britain. First Light tells the story at 10.30 after...